Manjaro Linux is one of those distributions that doesn't have a very good reputation in the Linux community. And there are many reasons for this, but there are two main ones. The first one, and, and probably the biggest one, is that their developers haven't been very good, really. They have made a series of very dumb mistakes, if you will, that have led a lot of people to just not trust them. So they've done things like try to put proprietary office suites on their distribution. They've tried making a proprietary browser, the default browser, on one of their spins. They've done several different things like that that has led to a lot of people not trusting them as bastions of free and open source software. They, but they've also made other mistakes, things like not renewing their SSL certificates on their repositories and on their website. They've made mistakes like pushing out flawed versions of PAMAC that has led to gigabytes upon gigabytes of requests on the AUR that didn't actually exist. They've done that a couple times. So they've made several mistakes over the course of the last few years that has led their reputation to suffer. And I think it's really interesting to talk about because at one time Manjaro was the golden child of Arch-based distributions. It was one of the first Arch-based distributions out there and it was touted as one of the best ways to install Arch, or at least something like Arch, if you wanted to do it an easy way, right? That was when Arch was a distribution that was kind of difficult to install if you've never done it before. Since then, obviously, Arch has become much easier to install, and people have questioned the need for Manjaro to continue to exist. So what I want to do today is talk a little bit about why man people hate Manjaro and some of the reasons why I think that it is both deserved and not deserved. And really what I want to conclude, and we'll kind of spoil the ending now, is that Manjaro has an Arch problem, is what it is, because Manjaro and we know this to be true, is not actually Arch Linux. And that's really going to be the boiling point for everything in this video. So let's go ahead and have this discussion. But before we do, if you would please leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It would really help the channel. So Manjaro Linux, what is it? Why is it? And is it good? I've answered these questions in a video cleverly titled, Is Manjaro Good? It's right here. It's a good video. You should go watch it right after you finish watching this video. But we're not here to answer the question, is Manjaro good? Instead, we're here to answer, why do people dislike Manjaro so damn much? Well, well, some of it is some of the stuff that I just talked about. The developers haven't done a very good job of being good stewards for their distribution. They've made some boneheaded decisions over the course of the last few years. And the thing about the Linux community is that they don't forget things, right? We all, if you've been in the Linux community for a reasonable amount of time and you you saw these decisions being made, you remember them. Canonical knows this. When they tried to get rid of 32-bit software, everybody freaked the hell out and everyone who was around then remembers it. Things like putting the Amazon link in the sidebar pissed a lot of people off for a very, very long time and people still remember that and still resent that it happened. It's, it's just a thing that, you know, people talk about still. And while it's not obviously still in the forefront, like it was when it was still happening, people in the Linux community do remember this stuff. And it's the same with Manjaro. They remember the decisions that they've made, and those poor decisions don't reflect favorably on the distribution itself. So that has tarnished their reputation. Earlier, I alluded to there being a second reason why Manjaro isn't very well loved in the Linux community, beyond just the poor development decisions that has have been made over the course of the last few years. And that reason is, well, Manjaro is not Arch. And that one singular fact, both technologically and more you know broadly in terms of Linux community acceptance, is the reason why Manjaro isn't well loved. Because it's not Arch. And one of the worst things that ever happened to Manjaro was the script that Arch Linux now includes in their ISOs called Arch install. Arch is now easy to install. Very, very easy. It's also not nearly as hard to maintain as it used to be. And while you do still have several boneheaded decisions coming out of the Arch team as well, they do a lot of weird things with their distribution and a lot of weird things with their repositories. It is not as hard to maintain a stable version of Arch as it used to be. 
it's much easier nowadays. And the claim to fame that Manjaro had at one point was that it was easy to install, or at least easier to install than Arch. And because they hold their software repositories back behind the Arch repositories, their distro was supposedly more stable. The problem is, like I said, Arch is no longer unstable, really, as long as you at least somewhat know what you're doing. And also, it's not hard to install anymore, right? It's much more accessible for even the more inexperienced Linux users out there to both install and maintain. So when Arch install was created or when it was officially shipped with the Arch ISO, Manjaro lost quite a bit of their reason to exist. But that happens a lot with all things in life, right? Things evolve, people change, new things are created, and things that used to be very popular become less relevant. That's just something that happens a lot. The things that become great in this world usually find a way to pivot when their reason for existence becomes questioned. So they come up with some new and exciting thing that pro propels them back into the forefront of people's minds and makes people like them again, right? They pivot so that they can become relevant again. The problem is Manjaro hasn't pivoted. They're still proclaiming themselves as the stable version of Arch. That's basically what they are. That's what they've always have been. And that's what they always will be. But like I said, that no, is no longer as special as it once you, was. So that's one reason why the whole Manjaro is not Arch thing, you know, it has affected the Manjaro reputation. But add on top of that, there's actually another reason why Manjaro not being Arch is a reason for their reputation being such as it is. And that is because as more people have decided just to use vanilla Arch, after either, either moving away from Manjaro or just testing it out, they have realized that Manjaro isn't as special as it once was. But also, the Arch Linux community has such a disdain for not just Manjaro, but every Arch-based distribution. They have a, a serious issue when it comes to accepting people who use and want support for Arch-based distributions. And Manjaro is the poster child of the Arch-based distro. And that leads a lot of people who use Arch Linux to talk negatively about Manjaro and that negativity has seeped into the Linux community at large which has caused the already low Manjaro reputation to sink even further and all of that just goes to say that the reputation for Manjaro is both affected by it not being arched technologically and also not being arched as a more social construct we have the situation where Arch is a really popular Linux distribution and their disdain for things based on their own distribution is so great, it has tarnished Manjaro to such an extent that a lot of people think that Manjaro is just a bad distribution. It, that's just the kind of the way that it is. Now, now again, a lot of this can be attributed to both of these problems, both at not being an Arch Linux and because of the lack of good leadership that they've exhibited over the course of the last few years. Their reputation is bad because of both of these things. And all of that leads to the question, should you use Manjaro? And I'm not going to tell you one way or another. I th have always been of the opinion use what you want to use. I have an entire video called Is Manjaro Good? And that in that video, I talk about the distribution itself. And I at least mostly ignore the stuff that goes around it. So if you want to go watch that video and discover whether or not the distribution itself is any good, I highly recommend you do so. But if you're talking about just simplistically and you want to take all of the stuff into account, really what I'd have to say is that if you're wanting to use Arch, just use Arch. The way that I look at it is that Manjaro doesn't offer a ton to their users that you can't get on Arch. Now, does that mean that Manjaro is bad from a distribution standpoint? No, it doesn't. Manjaro is perfectly fine. It does have its limitations and problems, but all Linux distributions have their limitations and problems. There's not a single perfect distribution out there, although OpenSUSE comes pretty close. Just you know, pretty close. <laughs> but the, the point is, is that Manjaro is what Manjaro has always been. And if you 
like Manjaro at a certain point and you you try it and you like it, that's perfectly fine. The reason why I made this video was just to kind of talk a little bit about why Manjaro has such a poor reputation in the Linux community. It's kind of complicated, but also it's been developed over the course of many years and the disdain of the arts community and the poor leadership skills of their development team over the course of the last few years has just kind of led to Manjaro being a also ran when it comes to a Linux distribution that a lot of people just don't either trust, don't like, have negative feelings about even, even if they've never tried it before. You know, there's a lot of people out there who have never tried Manjaro, but if you ask them about Manjaro, they tell you that they don't like it. That's where the kind of reputation of Manjaro kind of exists. People don't like it. Many of them haven't even used it. And that obviously leads to some problems for the Manjaro project because they are a big project, right? They have a corporate sponsor. Or they've created their own corporation now or, or something like that. And they, you know, they, they're trying to make a goal of this as a financial thing where they can actually, you know, sustain themselves. The problem is that they have a reputation that's going to make that really hard. And it's going to force them to try to do that pivoting that I just talked about earlier. And I think that the way they're planning on doing it is with things like Manjaro Mobile on the Pine Phone. Which, by the way, there will be a Pine Phone video up in the next week or so. If you want to see that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. But Manjaro does have a mobile version now. And I've used it. It's not very good, but that's just neither here nor there, has, uh, ha that has very little to do with Manjaro and more just to do with Linux Mobile, but that's beside the point. But I think that that's where they're focusing a lot of their effort, and we'll see if that pivot is something that is going to prove to save their project. So that is it for this video. If you have thoughts on Manjaro, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I'm also on Ko-fi and there's a YouTube membership down below. And you can support me by heading on over to the merch shop, which is at shop.linuxcast.org. There you'll find t-shirts and desk mats and hoodies and cups and mugs and all this sorts of stuff. All that stuff goes directly towards helping the channel. Thank you to everyone who has gone over to support me in that way as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you very much for your support. By the way, finally, finally, finally got the end screen credits fixed. Everybody should be where they need to be. Just to note that if you're on this list and you find that your name has switched positions, that's not because your importance has changed. I just put them on the list in the order that they're listed on Patreon and YouTube. So that's the reason why they're in the order that they are right now, but that's just the way it is. So thanks everybody who supports me that way. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time. And I still said everybody wrong. I mumbled through it. <laughs> I don't know why I do that. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.